Hey everybody, this is Grav. I'm just going to give a nice little commentary tutorial to help you out with this time and help you not do the same things I did uh, mistakes-wise, because I, I made quite a few mistakes I didn't quite realize until uh, several hours later, so I'm just going to play this out and help you on the few things that I noticed compared to Randy's tutorial. So, of course, the start is the same. First thing coming up is the first grenade. Now, this you see here this little uh, shadow here, that's where you want to prime. You want to prime like a little bit earlier, like maybe right here. But what you, The goal of this is to kill the guard coming up as soon as you can. If you, if you prime like right here, what will happen is he will explode or he'll die, but he might still shoot you first with a charging animation or something. So you want to you prime it as early as you can so that he explodes. Even if he charging animations you, he will not hit you. And that's the kind of the goal of this. Uh, you, this guy is kind of not, he's not required to kill, but he's going to mess you up quite a bit. So it's it's worth it for sure. And you have an extra grenade to kill, so you might as well use it. See so primer here. Aim really close to this corner, so you have like good strafing. And for the throw timing, you don't want to do it too early, like if you throw it right here, it'll kind of hit the corner of this wall and it won't reach the guard, so it's kind of bad. It might still kill him if he runs into it, but it won't be very fast and he'll still shoot you a lot. So you want to wait like, I don't know, you see the, the corner, like wait like a few steps, yeah, a couple tenths, and throw right now and it should land right at his feet or right in front of this barrel. Both of those are good. If it's in the barrel, it'll like be consistent, but it doesn't matter really. If it if it goes like under his legs, it'll still kill him. But it's good to have like consistency with it, whatever you do. So anyway, you you kill this guy and then you start your line right on this shadow uh, snow difference here. It's the same as in Randy's. Uh, then first difference coming up. So for this first drone, Randy does not prime the grenade. He he walks all the way over here and just throws it. And while this does make the battery maybe slightly more consistent because you don't have the lag spike at the, the battery throw, it does not kill, kill the guard. There's a guard behind here. He does not kill him 100% of the time, assuming your throw is good. What will happen if you don't prime, if you walk over here, throw that grenade, it'll land in the right spot and then he'll like sidestep it or charge you, or whatever else, and he'll just not get ex he'll not get killed. Like half the time he'll die, but half the time he won't. So priming here accomplishes the goal of killing this guy 100% of the time, which will probably increase your consistency of everything else by way more than the lag spike will make your consistency worse for the battery. And I didn't I didn't even notice a difference honestly between the lag spike being hit the battery and not like you'll still get the throw very often so don't worry about it I think this is an important thing to kill this guard because what will happen if you don't is he'll either shoot you like right when you're near him or he'll shoot you when you're way in the end of the level and it'll just screw everything up sorry so what I do instead is I prime the grenade for the next throw right now so you see me running past this second barrel right when this barrel goes off screen or when the explosion goes off screen either one I prime it so I start looking up now and of course as Randy said in his you want to use the side of this to throw that's if you're using widescreen of course if you're not using widescreen I'm sorry you'll have to find a different visual cue but this is when this hits the left side of your screen this corner right here that's when you throw and so you throw it right now but for the elevation as you set this up I just kind of slowly I keep slowly looking up to kind of if you jerk your stick up, you'll probably not be able to set it up as easily, but just kind of slowly aim up, and as you're approaching it, like right here, when you're a few steps before, I try to get my grenade icon half on the mountain, half off the mountain. And assuming your line is parallel to the to the wall, this will always work. Like, you, you'll always have this in the right spot. If your if your line is not parallel, then this will be a bad cue, because your angle is different. 
and so will the other one to be to be fair but this is a little more volatile if your line isn't good so make sure your line's good and this will work every time it's half on half off I know Randy uses the dot on the mountain face on like this white area I no, don't have a dot so you're on your own there I don't know how good it is or how bad it is so I assume it works well because Randy got consistent throws uh, but yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you find something that works. So yeah, priming earlier and then throwing right now. And so what will that what that will do is it'll hit it'll hit the grenade on the left side of this drone on the back, so it'll blow up the guard and the drone. That's like perfect. It, it pretty much it's really hard to get the explosion anywhere else. Like you either explode it in the right spot or you won't explode at all, like it'll get hidden up here or something. So if you hear it exploding, it's always in the right spot pretty much. Uh, this guard, he's gonna cuck you sometimes, I'm sorry, like there's nothing you can do about it. He'll shoot you right here and then mess up your whole setup for the next part. Just hope he doesn't do it, that's all I can say. You can still recover if he does hit you, but uh, it's kinda hard, you have to be good at adjusting and improvising, so I won't mention anything else because it's kind of impossible to give a good good tutorial on how to react to him so just hope he doesn't hit you and that's good now for the next part uh, Randy uses this when you are running along this line here use this as when to prime now I did it like right here like a frame later and the reason I did that is because it, it got my grenade more in the middle of the, the battery. So if you think about the battery, your throws are going to be all around it with your throws. Like your throws are not going to be the same every time. But if your throws are consistently in front of the battery, whatever angle you have, then your throw has to be more precise. If your throw is way behind the battery, again, it has to be more precise. But if you throw it, if you think about like the circle of the radius of your throw at all directions, you want the 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 battery to be on the 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 actual the maximum of the radius it's kind of hard to say without a picture but you, if you want it to be on the outside outside of the circle if it's like beyond the circle or inside the circle your throw has to be better and you have to hope that the explosion is wide enough so when you're looking at your failed runs check out where that explosion is if you see it in front of the battery then you want to prime a little bit later so that it explodes later. If you see it behind the battery prime earlier, it'll explode earlier. But it's again, and then you'll you'll calibrate that by when you prime right here. So the way I did the throw, how fast I set it up, it turned out priming right here was perfect. But if you do it, if you do the setup really fast, like you're super awesome at doing it frame perfectly, then maybe you'll prime like right here instead, or right here. Who knows? But just keep that in mind, this is not a 100% guaranteed priming cue. You want to make sure that you are doing what works for you. But this is a good starting point. Prime right here. And you should get it. You should get it, you know, most times. So you prime, you keep walking on this line. And as soon as you get to when the left side of this, you see the, the windows indented into the wall, this left part. Again, Randy's tutorial shows this too you turn right when this hits the left side of your screen. Now here is the biggest difference. What Randy does when he hits here is he turns right to get the entire plane on screen, turns left again to get the plane off screen, then looks up, then throws. So the setup takes longer. Well, not it doesn't take that much longer, but it, it's a little more convoluted. It's hard, harder to do consistently, and as a result, your throws probably won't hit every time even if you're good and as Randy has said before and he's the king of this level like you'll get into ruts where you'd never get the throw and I was in plenty of those ruts so I'm like well how do I make this easier you know that's the natural uh, reaction so what I did is I tried to make it a one turn throw so instead of turning twice I turn right here and I just tap the stick right just tap the stick right and what will happen Unless you tap it for like literally one frame, you want to tap it more than that, obviously. But just a small tap. What will happen is your screen will turn right, and the plane 
will be right off screen. If you turn too far, you'll notice the plain nose still sticking out on your screen. That's how you know you turn too far. You can get it still if you have like the first possible frame of the uh, the plane's nose is just like barely on screen. You can still get the throw, but ideally you want the um, the plane to be completely off screen, and it's pretty hard to to have it off screen and it had the wrong position. Like it's harder to turn like one frame than it is to turn too much. So just keep the plane off screen and you should have the right angle. Just kind of use this as a reference, like if you notice you have this angle and it doesn't hit, then make sure that you're looking up all the way, but also I guess you can use this as a reference point. Make sure your angle is correct. But in my practice I never I almost never turned too little. So and you of course you can use the the explosion location to find out exactly what happened. So yeah, you turn right and then look up as soon as you finish turning. Like you turn, wait for your screen to stabilize all the way, and then you start looking up. So I'll show you this in real time. Uh, a little bit earlier. So you turn. So you, you see how I like I don't start looking up while I turn. I wait till I finish turning. So turn, stabilize, then look up. And so if you turn slightly earlier, or you look up slightly earlier than I do, that'll change your overall timing for the throw. So that if you do if you look up earlier, what will happen is you'll have to start priming earlier instead to compensate. And this is what I mean earlier when I said calibrating by how long it takes you to do this part. So you can look up at different times, probably, but you'll have to calibrate accordingly. So yeah, look, wait. So for consistently doing it like I do it with my timing position, then turn, stabilize, then look up, and make sure you're looking up all the way. Like when you're speed running, you want to go fast, and your hands will make you do things faster as you get better at the game or the level. But you want to override that instinct to do this part as fast as you can. Like you want to be very sure you're looking up all the way. Because if you don't look up all the way, then your throw will be offline every time. So just make sure you're looking up. Maybe hesitate for like a couple frames to make sure that you can't look up anymore. Then throw with Z and tap R just a little bit after. Like just like bam bam. Like I'm trying to think of my timing. I'll try to put my controller next to my mic. It's like something like that. I can't guarantee that's the exact timing because I'm not playing the game. So, But the throw, it's not hard. Like You'll know when you got the throw when you have the grenade right here. It'll be on screen for one frame. If you get the glitchy throw with the lag, or I don't know what causes it, then you won't see it on screen ever. That's still an Arlene, but it's going to be offline probably. So that is your cue. Uh, but I mean, most times I got this on screen. Like, you know, most times I got the throw, it was like 90%. So overall consistency for this trick, maybe like uh, 25 to 50%, depending on how in the moment I, how like focused I was and how good I was playing. So it's a pretty easy trick, really. And you have to do it three times, obviously, but the first one's like the easiest. So yeah, you throw it. It should hit. Be sure to check out if you don't have it, if you don't have C completing before the second grenade or the second thro drone throw, then I mean, it's up to you whether you want to play out the run. Like, obviously, if you're practicing or you're getting better at the game, you're not quite as good at the level as me or Andy, then play out runs, practice these last two. But once you're confident, you can get 32 and you're getting drone kills on both of these like beware like you're gonna have some fails where you only miss the battery and it's gonna feel like shit so if you don't hear the explosion on the battery and you don't see the complete probably quit out unless you are learning so I don't know it's it's up to you like people like playing out frigate agent bug fails for some reason so I can't really <laughs> advise it but do what you want to do I guess so now when you finish this throw I should say again, or I should say that now instead of running on this line, you're running on the line here. And the good thing about my throw compared to Randy's is that this sets you up 
perfectly for this line. Randy's throw, when he does the double turn with the plane, he ends up in the road and has to like come back to this line. And it's a little slower, so I think this is better just for speed and for, cons and for consistency. So I think you want to be like right on this line, or maybe even slightly on the left, like right here. But you can't really tell very easily when you're not looking down, so just, just be generally right here, you'll be good. So you keep walking. You'll get a boost here sometimes. Sometimes you'll get a boost after you start priming and it'll ruin your run, so not much you can do about it. Uh, just hope it doesn't happen. Uh, for the priming of this grenade, it's the same as Randy. See this, like, dip where this meets this, right? In between those two bars, you see the, the dip corner? That's where you prime. Now, if your line is too far outside of this, if you're stepping in the road, then obviously this will be different because you're not in the same position. So make sure your line is in a consistent location so that your priming cue works every time. And again, depending on how long it takes you to set up the, the throw here, you want to calibrate this to work in the way that you want it to. So make sure you look at your failed runs and see if the explosion is in front of the drone but low, that means it bounced off. So you primed it too late. But if you see the explosion above the drone and it's too short, that means you primed it too uh, early and it exploded too early. So that is your, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between too early and too late. So you have to look at the elevation of the explosion. And that's kind of the only way to tell. So that's my advice to you for calibrating this. So you prime there, you keep walking, keep walking. You'll see C complete now or, or even earlier. Like right now is pretty close to later. Late, like I think like right here is the latest you'll see it complete right before you turn. So you'll always be able to quit out if you don't see C complete like, like right here. If you don't see C complete as this mount hits your side of your screen, you can safely know that your run is over. So play at your own risk. So I guess you're priming now and you start turning right when the mound here, this peak, hits the left side of your screen. You start turning. Now Randy has some visual cue on the ground like this little like gray splotch or this gray splotch or something. I don't know. It, use it if you want but I don't think you need it. I don't think you need a single visual cue on the ground at all. Like what happens here, you hit this corner, you start turning until you're parallel and even slightly left of parallel, like you want to be either parallel or left of parallel so that your grenade hits either in front of the drone or on the side of the drone. And it's kind of hard to do it consistently, so just turn and hope it's right. You'll be able to tell by looking at your explosion if your angle was good, so I'll go backwards a bit here. So yeah, turn right here. And if you don't want to use visual cue on the ground, the, the way to know how to throw it is just like turn until you're parallel. And as soon as you are like, I mean, I guess the only visual cue I could say is like right here, this little line. Like that's when you start looking up. So when, when you're finished turning, then look up. So similar to the, the battery throw, don't look up and turn. Look, turn left, then look up as soon as you finish turning. Like when you think you have the right angle, then start looking up. And as soon as as soon as you have the right look up, all the way up, then throw as soon as you can. So you don't have to worry about your position on the ground. This this way of timing it should work. But again, if you want to use his position on the ground, look at his video. It, it, it works for him. I'm sure it'll work for you. But I found that it's not necessary for the setup. So yeah, you... you I'll do it one more time here. You turn. As soon as you finish turning, then you look up. As soon as you finish looking up, then you throw. And that's it. Now, very important thing coming up. Your speedrunning instincts will tell you, okay, I finished throwing, let's make a beeline to the next position to save as much time as possible. Do not do that. You want to take a nice wide J turn or whatever it is. Like, you look down and you make a nice wide turn. You want to be still on the right, like see the, the gap between the yellow lines here? If you end up like over here, you, you turn too wide. So don't turn that wide. You want to still be to the right 
of this perpendicular line between the left side of the yellow line and the snow here. So if you're on the right of that, you should, you should be still good. I'm going to take a nice wide turn. Otherwise, this boost right here will not be in a position or not be at a time that works. So if you get boosted in the road, like right here, you will never ever complete this drone. And it took me a, lo a long time to realize that because when I first started this strat, I'm like, oh shit, I'm getting 31 fails. Like, I'm going to get an untied. But then I realized that I was turning so fast that this guaranteed boost was happening so late. And you need the time, the time between this boost and the next boost that you get. It's like not very long, but it just happens to be perfect for the, the, the amount of time you have to prime it. So you need this boost to be as almost as far back as you can possibly get it. Now, if you get it like right back here, it's probably like too early, but that you'd have to turn like insanely wide for that to happen. So aim for the boost timing to hit right when you're on this threshold and then start priming while the hit is happening to make sure that you have the perfect early time, early prime rather. So you start priming and you're walking perpendicular to, you know, 90, 90 degree angle from this uh, line that you were on. Keep within the yellow line, uh, perpendicular line here. And for this part, I can't really tell you of good visual cue. Like, you just kind of have to know. Like, right when you're just before this yellow line, like here or even slightly closer, you start turning and throwing. But like, I don't know, you can find something on the mountain maybe, or some dot thing to make sure you're in the right position. I don't know. Like maybe when your dot is at a certain uh, area here, you can know when to turn. But again, I have no dot. I can't tell you. So just when you're when you're close to the yellow line, but not on the like, yellow line, you start turning. And just like all the other all the other throws, you turn, then look up. So you finish turning until this mountainside here. You see this entire thing. It, it has a little thing that sticks out. You want this little corner here to be just off screen, like just as close to off screen as possible, or just as close to being on screen, I should say. So you, like right here is absolutely, I guess I turned a little bit farther. Okay, I know why I did this. Okay, this is important. So when you are, depending on how your line here is, like if you turn if your, if your line is not perfectly perpendicular, you'll have to adjust, depending on that. So, I think I, I think I did an adjustment, but as a general, in general, like you want this to be off screen, just barely, like right here. See the snow? That can work too. It, it you know, you can hit it from several different positions, like depending on where if you do it here or here, you might hit like right here. You might hit it like right here or right in the middle, like it doesn't really matter as long as you hit it close enough to explode it soon. But I mean, I can't give you much advice beyond this, like both the throw, or when to turn, and when to stop turning. Because it, 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 the human error, the human error is going to make this pretty hard to do completely identical every time. So just as a general rule, turn when you're close to this, get the mountain off screen mostly it should work like then look up and throw and try to throw just before you get hit that's when you know that you did it perfectly if you get the hit happening like 10 frames after you throw it like you throw and then you like wait a few tenths and then you get hit you probably are not going to have the proper priming length to get it ever like it'll bounce off every time so make sure your throw is like a frame before you hit or a couple frames at most and you'll know that you're doing it well and you can check out your uh, position on failed runs too I recommend doing that for every grenade you do checking out where your throws are is the most important thing to do in this level to make sure that you don't fuck up anything you know you're not doing something wrong every time because if you're doing something wrong every time and you don't notice it, you're never going to get this complete. So very, be very, very aware of where your throws are ending up. So that's pretty much it. Like you turn, you throw just before you hit, and then you make your line to the plane. 
last word here. There could be a guard here. If he back boosts you, uh, I'm sorry, you're getting 33 probably. Like, you can still get 32 with one back, like, if the rest of your run is good. But, I mean, chances are you, you probably made like a tenth of a mistake somewhere, so. Hope you don't get backed. If you do think you're going to get boosted sideways, like you feel this drone to the left is going to shoot you, which is what happened in this run, actually. I, I knew I was going to get hit by the drone. So you want to be a little more left. Aim a little more left, like under this wing instead of right here, so that when you do get hit, you land right here and not in front of the plane. If you land in front of the plane, your run is over. You're going to get 33 or, or worse. Like You'll get it complete, but it won't be record. So... If you aim a little more left, you should safeguard against the boost trolling you. So you see here I got boosted, but it pushed me right into the uh, to the front of the plane, or right into the side of the front of the plane, and not totally in front, so it worked. And you know, your line doesn't have to be perfect, so you, you, you can afford to lose some frames to make sure you don't get a 33 you should still get 32, you know, fails all the time, so that's pretty much it. The explosion will happen, okay, I guess I should say, like, if you threw the third drone throw perfectly, you'll get a complete, like, right now. Like, you'll get a complete right now. And that's, like, insane. Like, you need an instant explosion for that to happen. But more likely, you're going to get, like, a medium explosion where... Your grenade is like right next to it, but it takes like a couple tenth, or it takes like a, a, a an extra cycle of the explosion to blow it up. And in that case, it'll blow up for like right now, or slightly after. So with me, I you can hear it blowing up. You can see my screen shaking right now. So that's when I that's when it exploded. It was like a couple frames before it ended. So you can get a TNS or a failed run even if you're explosion as as far away as possible from the drone and still completing but it's not very likely like don't try to sandbag your run on the hope that it's going to prevent you from losing a run to dns or to fail like just go as fast as you can to the plane and your explosion will more likely than not be fast enough so yeah I mean, that's pretty much it if you have any questions, let me or Randy know. We both know enough about this level. Him specifically knows way more about level than most, so uh, either of us should be able to help you nicely with this specific strategy. If you want to do 29 strat, Randy's probably a little more useful than I am, but yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think, if you have questions or whatever. So the time, probably 10 hours, 20 hours at most, if you know what you're doing. Again, it can take way longer if you don't recognize your mistakes so again use those explosion locations so yeah that's it let me know uh if you have any questions again so that's it later